we've been cleaning skulls with Dermestid beetles for about a year now, and we figured we'd give you an overview of exactly how we do it. It admittedly is a whole process, so there's a couple things that they need. They need to be warm and in a humidity controlled environment, and they stink. And so we chose to put a whole separate uh, building on our property in order to keep these beetles. We live in northern New Hampshire, so it gets cold in the winter. So we got an old shed, it was an old chicken coop, we gutted the whole thing, and then we insulated it. And so we have just, I think this is R15 insulation uh, in the whole thing, and we put up new boards and everything. The other thing that we did, you'll see, is this electric fence, it's off right now. But this is to keep raccoons and bears out of here. Again, they're stinky, they smell, and it's gonna be really attractive to the predators or the, or the scavengers that are in your area. So if you're gonna do this, highly recommend an electric fence. So moving inside, Again, they need to be kept warm. And this enclosure that they're actually in is gonna keep them, it's gonna do most of the temperature regulation, but we need to keep the inside of this 40, 45 degrees. And so we have a small propane heater that's hooked up to a couple hundred pound tanks out back. And so again, that keeps it throughout the winter like 40, 50 degrees. And then the inside of the enclosure does the rest. And so let's get into the enclosure itself. Again, they need to be heated and they need to be humidity controlled so we've got a viewing window here that we've put on top in order to kind of see what's going on and this is just a freezer that's been retrofitted to hold beetles so this freezer in particular if you can get one that has the hinges all the better but this freezer was one of those slide freezers for getting ice cream out of or whatever it may be. so we had to make our own top and so again just insulation and a piece of uh, of plywood here but moving inside, and again, it is a bit stinky, and that's kind of just part of the process. On the bottom where the beetles are actually existing, we have aspen wood chips. It has to be aspen. You don't want it to be pine or any or cedar or anything like that because those softwood spe species have certain enzymes or they have certain molecules in the bark that kill beetles. And so you want it to be aspen shavings. These blocks that you see here, are just floral, uh, wet floral uh, arrangement things, I guess. Uh, if you're making bouquets, you should. <laughs> Riley's filling me in on exactly what it is. So, the green things in there are these wet foam that are for making bouquets, and you just buy it right at Walmart. And what that foam is doing is that foam is where they're breeding and where they're pupating. So, that's you want to make sure that they have food, which is your, your skull, we got a beaver going right now, bedding material, which is that aspen shavings, and then also these foam blocks where they're going to be doing their breeding. So moving up from there, you'll see that we have this silver tape, that's just HVAC tape, and what that does is it prevents the beetles from being able to climb out of the enclosure, they can't climb over it because it's really um, slippery, and so they just they get a certain amount up and fall down and it keeps them all inside. So we've got several rings. I've never seen a beetle above the first one, but we ringed off a couple when we first made this. So again, moving up, we have, now we're, we're gonna get into the heating system. So this is a heat lamp that is hooked up to an ink bird temperature control um, thermometer. And so what that does is this ink bird is running this thermal lamp. Ceramic the ceramic bulb. And so when that bulb, that bulb turns on, when it's blue, we have it set at 80 degrees. So if it gets below 78 degrees, it turns the bulb on. And if it gets, once it gets above that, it then shuts off. And so that's this, this guy right here is our thermometer. And you'll see that we, you know, you're gonna have to do a lot of drilling through the side of your freezer. And so this is just a, I had a one inch bit that I dedicated to the project. And so I got a one inch hole here where I ran my temperature uh, gauge and my humidity gauge. So before we get into the humidity though, that, that temperature is really important. And so around our ceramic bulb here, we created a heat sink. So these are just pavers uh, that you get from Home Depot. And we again wrapped them in that HVAC tape uh, and aluminum foil. And what that's doing is it's just, it's just holding heat. You know, this is a big open space. And so especially in the winter, you wanna make sure that it's holding as much heat as possible. So this is just capturing heat and holding onto it. Moving on to the humidity. So this is again an ink bird that comes out here and we have it set at 47 degrees 
uh, or four, I'm sorry, 47% humidity. And then if it gets above that, if it gets to 50, it kicks on a fan. So that brings us over to this part. So this is a, a four inch by four inch hole that's cut here with a computer fan that's recessed in. And that fan runs out the side into just a uh, dryer vent. And so you, again, you can get these right at Home Depot and that's piping out the side. Part of that though, is that you need to make sure the airflow can come through this. And so if you're drawing air out, you need a place for the air to come in. And so over here, I've got a bunch of holes drilled. You can see kind of through this screen, all these holes. And the reason for all of the holes is that different times of the year, it's going to, the, the enclosure is going to be working harder to keep the humidity down. So like in the winter, for example, I'm more concerned about keeping heat in there than I am about con concerned about keeping humidity out. So I'm going to cover these up again with that tape. And I might only leave one of these circles, one of these one inch circles open to allow for some airflow. But again, in the winter, you want it to be warm. And same thing on this side. If you look, uh, we've got a piece of uh, tape here that allows us to kind of just to control the amount of air that's passing back and forth during the winter months. We keep them open in the summer. But you also will notice the screen. So this is, oh, this is... Let's see, you can zoom in here. Uh, 11, well, the size doesn't matter. Essentially, it's, it's bug netting is what it is. And the reason that we're using this is the whole purpose of the netting and, and kind of keeping this enclosed, it's not to keep the beetles in. If a couple of beetles get out, it's not a big deal. We have these beetles in our natural woods. Uh, it's about keeping the natural world out. So there's bugs that predate on these beetles and there's all sorts of other funguses and parasites that kill these beetles again because they live in our natural world so we want to keep that out we also want to keep flies out so that really fine mesh netting we've got it on both sides of every opening kind of double protection and on the outside we'll show you let me get this cover back up on the outside of the enclosure We have this, again, that netting, and you can see the bugs coming around the outside of it. Again, it's, it smells and it attracts those bugs that we have uh, in our natural world that you know, decompose carrion. So I put this, this screen on, but then I also siliconed all around the edge of it. You really want to make sure that you keep the flies out, because if you get flies and maggots, it can become a problem. This is all run, oh, and then I guess we have our lights. Um, didn't talk about that. And that's just a light strip that helps to keep it well lit. Uh, it, it changes colors and stuff too, if you wanna get crazy. But that's the enclosure in a nutshell. Again, you wanna keep that temperature around 80 degrees. You wanna keep that humidity below 50 degrees. And those, these two ink birds run the whole operation. And it's controlled from, you know, we've got our, our uh, electricity that comes in here so that's a good question riley asked how the how the beetles get water so you can do a couple things you can either put a wet paper towel in there and keep freshening it up every day or so or what we do is we put our skulls in frozen and we put your skull in frozen there's a lot of moisture associated with that and they tend to get their water from that so we haven't watered our beetles in the last year we've put about 100 skulls through here uh, and again we just put them in frozen we like to clean our skulls up a little bit. We like to take the eyeballs, the brain, the tongue out of them. It just, it takes the beetles a little less time to complete the skull, but also those big muscle groups start to rot a little bit if the beetles aren't keeping up with it. So it just helps keep the smell down. Once we take the skull out, once it's completely clear, and I guess one piece of advice I'd give you is when you're ready to take a skull out, give it one more day. Uh, there's always a little bit left on you. You get excited. I want to see the skull. I want to, you know, kind of move through the process, but give it one more day. Once it comes out of there, it goes into a crock pot and we do a crock pot with a heavy Dawn dish solution. We put it on high for eight hours. Uh, and this is not our crock pot that we use in the house. <laughs> we dedicated it just to this. And all that's doing is that that's really degreasing the skulls. So this is actually a coyote skull 
that came out that just came out of the degreasing solution and so you can see that it's really really clean from the beetles um, you can look inside that nasal cavity and see just how absolutely crazy uh, clean the beetles get it when it goes through the crock pot and that heat solution teeth are going to fall out so just be sure that you're kind of keeping track of those teeth i glue them in after once they are done uh, going through the, the degreasing solution and they've dried off I'm going to glue those teeth in and then I'm going to put them in a peroxide solution so this is a 30% peroxide solution but I cut it half and half of the water so it's really 15% peroxide and so right now <clears throat> we have a beaver skull that's been in here about two days and you can see it's whitening up really nicely I'm going to leave that for another day or two each skull is different beaver skulls tend to clean up um, a lot quicker than the uh, than like a bear skull or a raccoon skull those seem to need a couple more days in the peroxide once they come out of the peroxide they go into just a water bath and then they dry off and they're done you'll see that I'm using a glove here I this peroxide is really volatile on your skin so you want to make sure that you keep it corrosive. off the skin uh, it, it's corrosive and so it's going to it's going to eat up metal and things like that, and it's going to burn your skin if you get it on you. So just be really careful. Wear safety glasses if you're pouring it in and stuff like that. So that's how, I mean, that's the whole process. That's soup to nuts. You need a warm space that's away from your house because it smells. Uh, you need a crock pot to, you know, to degrease, and then a peroxide solution. So hope this helps. Uh, it's going to help you get more out of your harvest, and this has been one of the best investments that we made really enjoy working with these beetles.